You're watching Seattle Seahawks today, powered by Chad Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. It is day number three of NFL Free Agency, and it has been an eventful day so far for the Seahawks, bringing in some new talent, extending uh, some of their current players. We are here to catch you up to deep, uh, up to speed on all of it here on today's show. Let's uh, begin with the free agency tracker for the Seahawks of everyone that has signed to this point. It all started with Tyler Lockett getting a two-year $34 million restructure, bringing his cap hit down from $27 million this year to 15. Then Noah Fant got a two-year $21 million deal uh, to remain as the primary tight end target. The Seahawks coaching staff very optimistic about Noah Fant and his role in Ryan Grubb's air raid scheme. Leonard Williams gets a three-year, $64.5 million deal. A lot of rumblings about did the Seahawks overpay for Leonard Williams. But at the end of the day, when you gave up a second and fifth round pick at the trade deadline, you committed to Leonard Williams long term. Pharaoh Brown comes in at the tight end spot. More of a blocking tight end. One of the highest graded blocking tight ends in the NFL. Uh, he'll be there along with Noah Fant giving this tight end room a different look. But despite Paying Noah Fant and bringing in Pharaoh Brown, that doesn't mean the Seahawks are done investing in the tight end position just yet. Nick Harris is headed to Seattle. One-year, $2.5 million deal from the uh, Cleveland Browns where he was a center and a fullback. One of the best fullbacks in all of football this past season. It'll be interesting to see what type of role he plays. Will he be... In the interior of the offensive line, will he play fullback for Seattle or a little bit of both? Artie Burns on a one-year deal. He's back. He'll compete for playing time. And then the news coming in with just the last few minutes. Daryl Taylor is back. He uh, got a deal done with the Seattle Seahawks just before the RFA deadline approached, and he'll be back in Seattle. We don't know the terms yet of uh, what they are for Daryl Taylor at this point, but the news coming from Bob Condotta uh, of the Seattle Times tweeting out the following. My understanding is the Seahawks reached an agreement to extend Daryl Taylor before the RFA deadline today. Explains why he was not on any of the official lists. Daryl Taylor, this past season, played in all 17 games with five starts. And he managed to have five and a half sacks, seven tackles for loss, 28 tackles, and one pass breakup. The story of Daryl Taylor's career, of what we've seen at this point, is you're looking at a guy who is really good as a pass rusher. Nobody's denying that. 2022, nine and a half sacks, four forced fumbles, but that doesn't tell the whole story with Daryl Taylor. With Daryl Taylor, what we saw is, in the last few seasons, a guy that can get after the quarterback and does a really good job of that, but kind of just a one-trick pony of sorts. He has struggled in run defense. He's not great in coverage. I imagine what Mike McDonald and company have to be thinking is that Daryl Taylor has got to be a rotational pass rusher. Know your role, right? That's what I'm looking at for Daryl Taylor. His role with the Seahawks team is a rotational pass rusher, and he's a perfect fit to do that. Ask him to do any more, then that becomes a problem. He's been benched multiple times when he's been asked to do more than just be a pass rusher. What is your one-word reaction to the Seahawks extending Daryl Taylor? I'm going to say pass rush. I'll, I'll hyphenate for my word. You can never have too many pass rushers. Daryl Taylor is just that. I don't mind it at all. Give me your one-word reaction in the comment section below. Today's show is sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the place to go for daily fantasy made easy. Here's how it works. Choose two or more players in any given category. Get the choice of more or less. Whether you are talking rebounds in basketball, goals in hockey, home runs in baseball, fantasy points in NASCAR, plenty of different categories to choose from. And we got a trifecta here on prize picks in the association, the NBA. Pie Day tomorrow. I love Pie Day. Fifth grade, Pie Day was quite the celebration, if I'd say so myself. Uh, James Harden to have more than 3.14 points. Real ones know. Jalen Suggs to have more than 7.5 points. And then Jamal Murray to have less than 21.5 points. Let's say we put $20 down and all three of these hit. That's going to turn into $100 on prize picks. 
Play along with us. PricePicks.com slash CLNS. Promo code CLNS for a $100 deposit match. The link is in the comments and description of today's video. PricePicks.com slash CLNS. Promo code CLNS to play along with us today. All right, so let's continue with day number three of NFL Free Agency with uh, more moves the Seahawks have made. And with the Seahawks making such a late signing on Pharaoh Brown, we'll include him in this. We'll talk about really the last 24 hours. Nick Harris, one-year, $2.51 million deal with uh, Nick Harris. And I like his versatility with the ability to play center, to play the fullback spot both. I don't know what Ryan Grubb's going to do, but it's going to be fascinating to see how he's used. Maybe it's a number of different ways, potentially. Maybe he does both. Remember, you have Olu as well at the center spot. We'll see what happens with Evan Brown. I would think that Evan Brown probably doesn't come back now that you've done this deal with Nick Harris. Uh, And think about this. He played for Ryan Grubb at the University of Washington, so he knows – Uh, Ryan Grubb's air raid system, what he expects out of his offensive linemen. Uh, I think it's a good fit for the Seattle Seahawks at a relatively cheap cost, uh, to be honest with you. What's your favorite signing from free agency of the Seattle Seahawks so far? Is it a guy like Nick Harris? Is it Leonard Williams? Is it Daryl Taylor? Somebody else? Wait in the comment section let us know who your favorite signing is to this point. We are a rocket ship here on Seahawks today. We're marching towards 51,000 subscribers on the channel, around 200 subs away from reaching that next milestone. And we're talking free agency, trades, the draft, and more. Your free agency and off-season headquarters is Seattle Seahawks today by Chat Sports. Subscribe now for free. Never miss a moment. If the Seahawks make a move, you're going to be the first to know about it here on the channel. Subscribe now. You'll be glad you did. Let's talk Pharaoh Brown now. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, whoa, whoa. Let the Seahawks go. If you know, you know on that. Uh, Pharaoh Brown, one year, $3.25 million. The Seahawks lost Will Disley and Kobe Parkinson. You bring back Noah Fant, you got to replace him, right? They go with a blocking tight end. Although Pharaoh Brown had a 50-plus yard touchdown uh, for the New England Patriots last year, He's not known to be much of a receiver, but he's one of the best blocking tight ends in football. PFF rated him this past season as a top 10 blocking tight end. And he was on a cheap deal. This didn't cost the Seahawks much at all. So I think for Seattle, this this signing makes sense to bring in Pharaoh Brown here. A lot cheaper than what Colby Parkinson and Will Disley got. Specifically, Colby Parkinson, I felt got overpaid, and I look at that tight end position, I'm begging, I'm pleading, please use it more effectively, Ryan Grubb. Don't do what Shane Waldron and Pete Carroll did. Get the most out of these guys, and uh, Brown is a blocking tight end. That should allow things for Noah Fant to open up and really excel as a receiving tight end. Be a nice one-two punch. Artie Burns is back in Seattle, re-signing on a one-year deal, still waiting on terms of what they are exactly. This is the third straight year that Artie Burns is a part of the Seattle Seahawks. And with Burns, if we're going to be honest, he simply just won't go away, right? For whatever reason, I guess the Seahawks like him around in the locker room, um, provides another depth piece, he'll compete. With Artie Burns, it simply comes down to this. It, he doesn't move the needle. And he's going to hold the spot until they find something better. And Artie Burns will likely be back on the practice squad at some point this year, and that's how it's going to be. So, Artie Burns, best of luck to you, but this one I don't think is that big of a deal, in all honesty, for the Seahawks compared to some of the other moves they've made. I got a grade that I'll give you for the Seahawks for what they've done in free agency so far, but I want to hear from you guys first. A, B, C, D or F, way in the comment section, let us know what you think your grade is for the Seahawks here. My grade, I'll go B minus. Uh, the Seahawks have made, they, they took care of the number one priority, right? Leonard Williams. Still more work to be done. Going forward here, still trying to find help uh, at some of the other positions uh, here at this point in time. Still a ways to go. Job's not finished, right? More work to do. B minus. You haven't made any mistakes yet, 
You took care of your biggest priority, but we're still waiting for a big splash. Subscribe now to Seahawks Today for continuing free agency coverage on the channel. We got you covered, and we will see you next time here on Seahawks Today. Thank you.